Let me ask the over romanticized question. Do you think we'll ever engineer an AGI system that we humans would be able to love and that would love us back? So have that level and depth of connection. I love that question. Um, and it, it, it relates closely to things that I've been thinking about a lot lately, you know, in the context of this human AI research. There, there's um, social psychology research, uh, in, in particular by um, Susan Fisk at, at, at Princeton in the department I used to, um, where I used to work, um, where she, she dissects human attitudes toward other humans into a sort of two-dimensional, you know, a two-dimensional two-dimensional scheme, and um, one dimension is about ability. You know, how how able, how capable uh, is is this other person? Uh, and the but the other dimension is warmth. Hmm. So you can imagine another person who's very skilled and capable, but is very cold, right? Hmm. Um, and you wouldn't you wouldn't really like highly, you, you might have some reservations about that other person, right? Um, but there, there's also a kind of reservation that we might have about another person who who elicits in us or displays a lot of human warmth, but is, you know, not good at getting things done, right? That, that like the greatest esteem that we, we reserve our greatest esteem really for people who are both highly capable mm -hmm. and also um, uh, quite warm. Right. That that's that's like the best of the best. This I mean I, I'm just I, I'm, this isn't a, a normative statement I'm making. This is just yeah. an empirical. It's yeah. an empirical statement. Yeah. This is what humans seem. This is, these are the two dimensions that people seem to kind of like, along which people size other people up, and and in AI research we really focus on this capability thing. You're like we want our agents to be able to do stuff. You know this thing can play Go at a superhuman level. That's awesome. Mm. And but that's only one dimension. What's the what about the other dimension? What would it mean for an AI system to be warm? Um, and you know, I, I don't know. Maybe there are easy solutions here, like we can put a put a face on our AI systems. It, it's cute. It has big ears. I mean, that, that's probably part of it. But I think it also has to do with a pattern of behavior, um, a pattern of, you know, what would it mean for an AI system to display caring, compassionate behavior? in a way that actually made us feel like it was for real. Yeah. Uh, that we didn't feel like it was simulated. We didn't feel like we were being duped. Um, to me that, you know, people talk about the Turing test or some, some descendant of it. I, I feel like that's the ultimate Turing test. You know, is there a, is there an AI system that can not only convince us that it knows how to reason and it knows how to interpret language, but that we're comfortable saying, yeah, that AI system's a good guy. You know, like, I, I mean- <laughs> on, that, the, on the warmth scale, yeah. whatever warmth is, we kind of intuitively understand it, but we also want to be able to, 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 yeah, we don't understand it explicitly enough yet to be able to engineer it. Exactly. And that's, and that's an open scientific question. You kind of alluded to it several times in the human AI interaction. That's the question that should be studied and probably one of the most important questions and humans, we and humans, to AGI. we humans are are so good at it. Yeah, you know, it's not just weird. It's not just that we're born warm. You know, yeah. like I, I suppose some people are are warmer than others, given you know whatever genes they manage to inherit. But there's also there's also there are also learned skills involved, right? I mean, there are ways of communicating to other people that you care, uh, that they matter to you, that you're enjoying interacting with them, yeah. right? Um, and we learn these skills from one another. And it's not out of the question that we could build engineered systems. I think it's hopeless, as you say, that we could somehow hand design these sorts of these sorts of behaviors. But it's not out of the question that we could build systems that kind of we 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 in, we in, instill in them something that sets them out in the right direction so that they they end up learning what it is to interact with humans in a way that's gratifying to humans. I mean, honestly, if that's not where we're headed, I want out. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's exciting uh, as a scientific problem, just as you described. I, uh, I honestly don't see a better way to end it than talking about warmth and love. And Matt, I don't think I've ever had uh, such a 
wonderful conversation where my questions were so bad and your answers were so beautiful. <laughs> so I, I deeply appreciate it. I really enjoyed it. Well, it's thanks been for, very fun. I, you know, it's, I, as you can probably tell, I, um, I really, you know, I, there's something I like about kind of thinking outside the box yeah. and like, yep. um, so it's good and to have an opportunity to do that. Awesome. Thanks so much for doing it.